Cheating, near death and rat poison. You guessed it, it's the 1904 Olympic Marathon. Marathons originate from some pretty unreliable historical accounts that a messenger ran all the way from the field of battle back to Athens to announce the news of victory. The messenger then promptly killed over and died, so naturally 2,386 years later, some other Greeks thought it would be a great idea to include this challenge in the first ever Olympics. Unfortunately, that messenger didn't have a tape measure with him. So the first few marathons, including the one that is the subject of this video, weren't quite the same 26.2 miles we know today. Or if you're Irish, 26.5 apparently. There are now over 800 of these races annually around the globe, and some of them have got pretty weird. There's one in North Korea, there's one at the North Pole, and there's even one on Mount Everest. But by far the weirdest was the one that took place at the 1904 Olympic Games. Take your mind back, it's 1904, the Mormon church just tried to ban polygamy for the second time, Times Square got its name and Facebook was just a twinkle in a twinkle in a twinkle of an eye. It was also the year of the third ever Olympic Games, the first to take place outside of Europe, and it was shaping up to be a pretty interesting one. Originally meant to be held in Chicago, no Chicago, no actual Chicago, the Olympic Committee changed its mind and held it in St. Louis because it would coincide with the World Fair. Because it was only the third modern Olympic Games, it wasn't quite as professional as it is nowadays, with athletes staying in multi-million pound Olympic villages, but more importantly provided with nearly half a million condoms. This distinct lack of sexual protection, as well as other things, like the fact that until 1904 the first prize was a silver medal and a bit of an olive tree, meant that only amateur athletes attended the first few Olympic Games. However, because of its location, St. Louis, aka hundreds of miles inland away from major ferry ports, it wasn't that easy to get to for amateur athletes. This meant that only 12 countries were represented at the games this year, and it was all downhill from there. The swimming took place in a weirdly shaped lake, making it hard to measure the distances, and because of the lack of competition, George Iser managed to win six medals, half of them gold, in gymnastics, despite having a solid wooden leg. All in all, 589 out of the 651 athletes attending the Games were American. William Johnson called it an Olympics best forgotten. But what took place at the marathon was truly unforgettable. It's August 30th, and unsurprisingly for the middle of America, temperatures are topping out at 33 degrees. This mixed with the dust kicked up by passing cars meant that the runners were in some serious need of hydration. Unfortunately, the Olympic organiser that year, a pretty twisted man called James E. Sullivan, only put two places to access water along the route, as a test to find out the effects of purposeful dehydration. He got his answer in the form of several nearly dead athletes, and the worst ever ratio of marathon starters to finishers in history. I mean, you gotta know that an event went badly when it takes up a whole subsection of your Wikipedia page. Anyway, let's get down to the racing. There are five races you really want to know about. The first is Fred Laws from New York, who led the pack from the starting gun. However, by the ninth mile, he was suffering from severe cramps and decided to call it a day and catch a lift back in a passing car. However, because it was 1904 and cars looked like brum and they weren't very reliable, the car broke down just 10 miles later. So Laws decided to do the decent thing and run back to the stadium and tell everyone that all the other runners were really struggling. However, it seems he forgot all about this, and when he entered the stadium and everyone was cheering his name, uh, he just crossed the finish line and declared himself the winner. Just before being crowned victor by the president's daughter, Alice Roosevelt, someone called him out. His response amounted to, lols, was only joking, mate. And the AAU promptly banned him for life. Although, it turns out life just means until you say sorry because he was allowed to compete the following year. While Laws' athletic career was seemingly over, this meant very good things for the man in second place, Thomas Hicks, another American. However, his race wasn't without controversy either. About 10 miles from the finish line, his trainers had to stop him from lying down at the side of the road, a move that proved nearly fatal for William Garcia, another runner who had to be rushed to hospital. To keep Hicks going, his trainers and coaches had a trick up their sleeves. That trick was strychnine, otherwise known as rat poison. Meant to stimulate the nerves and keep the athlete moving, small doses were placed on Hicks's tongue and washed down with egg whites and brandy, creating some sort of alcoholic, poisonous meringue inside of him that kept him stumbling to near the finish line. However, even with this concoction, he didn't run all the way. Right at the end of the race, his coaches had to pick him up and carry him over the finish line, reportedly with his feet still kicking as if he was running like Scooby-Doo. The judges decided this was good enough and awarded him the victory. It then took four doctors an hour to make sure he didn't die. 
Because the welfare was happening nearby, some of the attendees came over to watch. Some, including two African men, decided the Olympics didn't look that hard, so they just give it a go. Name I'm not going to try and pronounce one, and name I'm not going to try and pronounce two, would be the first two black Africans to ever compete in the Olympics. However, their placing in the marathon was met with some disappointment as they only came in 9th and 12th, although there's a good chance they would have placed slightly better if they hadn't been chased over a mile off course by angry neighbourhood dogs. By far my favourite story from the marathon belongs to Felix Carvajal. Day to day he was a postman in his home country of Cuba. He had had to appeal to the local Cuban population to raise enough money to get to St. Louis. He made it as far as New Orleans, aka the first place in America he would have stopped, before he lost all of his money on a dice game. He then had to hitchhike the remaining 600 plus miles to the marathon. During the race he seemingly suddenly remembered that he hadn't eaten in 40 hours and thus began his search for food. He stopped at a car whose inhabitants were eating peaches and asked for one. They immediately said no. Felix responded by what some sources call playfully snatching two peaches. But I don't know how that even works, so I'm just gonna say he stole the peaches. However, the forbidden fruit wasn't enough. He saw an orchard nearby and thought of the old Chinese proverb, steal a peach, you gotta steal some apples. He promptly stopped and snacked on a few. Finally, karma came around on Felix because the apples were in fact rotten and he suffered from severe stomach cramps. According to some sources, he decided to lie down and have a quick nap to sleep off the pains. When he awoke, he rejoined the race and crossed the finish line. Shortly to his own amazement, he still managed to place fourth. Unsurprisingly, the winning time of this marathon is the slowest recorded in Olympic history, with the second slowest being 30 minutes faster. Surely this would go down as the worst Olympic marathon in history. Oh yeah, obviously apart from that one. Thanks for watching my video, give it a like and subscribe if you liked it, and feel free to leave any feedback in the comments.